Hello everyone and welcome to the Annoying Spirit community. My name is Candace Paul and I am an author and publisher with the Knowing Spirit LLC. I just wanted to share this with you guys. So I wrote the second installment of my book of my spiritual warfare series, Spiritual Warfare Rise to Power. In 2018, I finished it and then I published it at the beginning of 2019, January, I believe. And it's just interesting how some of the themes I was talking about in that book are happening as we speak, right? And so I'll read the chapter to you that I'm talking about. But just a little bit of background on the book. So in the series, I like to call the work that I do edgy Christian fiction. And the reason I call it edgy is because it's not really a hallmark type of feel good um, fiction because it talks about a lot of serious issues. I mean, we're talking about spiritual warfare. So it talks about evil and demons and people having to confront serious topics about themselves and serious issues about themselves and forgiveness when it's hard to forgive and turning away from sin. All of these different themes uh, I talk about in the book. And we'll get into that more later because I want to start doing more videos like this where I give you a little bit of insight on my writing and the work that I've done. Well, in any event, uh, the book is about a demon who comes to earth, right? And you see that from the first book, there is an extensive training process for demons to even get to earth, okay? So a demon named Jade, that's his demonic name, but then he has a public facing name called Jade Denton in the second book. He decides to shoot for the stars and he has a very ambitious goal of running as an independent candidate for president of the United States of America. So he consults with his mentor, in a sense, Samuel Linden, who is also a demon who's been on earth for centuries. And he tells him that he wants to put in his bid for in a, a run for president of the United States. So Sam obviously is a bit like, okay, um, you are new to all of this. You've only been on earth for three years. We have systems in place. We literally have ironclad systems that have worked for centuries. Why are we going to allow you to just take a shot at messing up what we've already arranged? And what you find out in the book is that everything is prearranged. Everything is very much set up and demons have worked out all of these systems and uh, organized groups and efforts and all of these type of things for one singular purpose. And that goal is simple. It's to acquire as many human souls as possible so they can stay on earth longer. That's the goal. It's simple. Now, however they execute it, it could be whatever way that they want. And so you find that demons have a network. They actually have a support system in a way. Uh, they rely on each other heavily. They bounce ideas off of each other. And in many ways, they work well together in order to achieve the goal that they want. You also find out that there are some humans who are aware of this. They understand the demonic world. They are involved in it. They participate in it. And they know what the end result will be for them, but they just want whatever they can get in this life and on this earth. So the chapter that I'm going to read to you is actually the first televised debate that all of the candidates have. So all of these candidates in, in this world, in my book, they know what the real system is. So George Duncan, who is another candidate, was promised the role of president of the United States. But it all of a sudden the plans changed. He didn't understand why. George Duncan is human. And he's obviously upset about that. So he's told that he has to throw the election for himself and he has to comply. He has no choice. And the reason he has no choice is because his family 
was threatened and his life was threatened if he did anything differently. So with all that being said, that is setting up what I'm about to read to you for chapter 18. Now, I want you to listen to what I'm gonna read and tell me in the comments, just let me know if you see any similarities to what's happening today, okay? And if you see some, that's great. Just let me know what they are. If you don't and you're like, oh, not, not so much, that's okay too. I just want you to hear it and listen out, okay? So this is chapter 18. Senator Duncan, George snapped out of the days he was in. His opponents, Jay Denton and Susan Everly, were staring, just waiting for him to respond to the moderator. My apologies. Could you repeat the question? A few people in the crowd attending the first televised national debate started whispering among themselves. Sure, Senator. The question was regarding how you plan to repair the current state of health care. George looked out into the crowd as beads of sweat popped on his forehead. Ah, yes. Well, affordable health care has become a matter of life and death for many Americans. I would want to expand what we have in place so that every American is covered while addressing some of the current issues most Americans have run into. What does that even mean? Jay interjected. To me, it sounds like more of the same, a lot of vague talk and very little action. To me, what you said equates to no significant improvement for the American people, just a continuation of a broken system. The crowd began clapping and the moderator had to remind everyone attending of the rules regarding the debate. George wanted to counter what Jay said, but realized he couldn't. Instead, he just stood there and watched Jay grandstand. Susan also had very little to contribute to the back and forth. I believe we need innovation in healthcare. We need to start thinking about ways Americans not only get the healthcare they need, but get the healthcare they want. What you want matters, right? Jay looked into the crowd for support and they began to clap again. Ideally, healthcare should be three things, affordable for patients and taxpayers, cover all procedures and accessible to everyone. With our current system, this seems impossible, but it doesn't have to be. Over the past several months, I have spoken to healthcare professionals, nurses, doctors, and support staff, and asked them what they needed to bring proper healthcare to patients. I have also spoken to medical researchers, the people trying to find cures for some of the most serious illnesses Americans face to see what they need. Last, but certainly not least, I have spoken with many of you, the American people, to understand the daily battles each and every one of you face. I didn't wanna leave anyone out. I spoke to those of you who desire access to more preventative healthcare as well as those suffering with chronic illnesses that require extensive treatment. I didn't just ask what you need, I asked what you want. What I found is healthcare professionals need help and want to be appropriately compensated for the care they provide. Healthcare providers must meet customers' demands but shouldn't be bogged down by red tape and patients need to be able to afford treatment but want better treatment options. So how do we give everyone in the system what they want and need? We can achieve this by working together. Jay was eloquent and went way over his allotted time. The moderator asked a prearranged follow-up question. How exactly do you plan on achieving this, Mr. Denton? First, we have to change the way we think about healthcare. As it stands today, we think of healthcare as medical professionals solving problems for the patients, but in reality, we are all in this together. It will take all of us to cure diseases with the understanding that we all must give back so we can significantly reduce cost or eliminate cost altogether. The audience was listening intently I am working with a team to iron out the details, but I plan to make a program where healthcare would be absolutely free for all Americans. 
no matter their level of income. But it would require that patients become partners with researchers, medical professionals, and the government to help us cure all illnesses. Jay was saying things everyone had been waiting decades to hear. But there was, of course, a catch. We would provide free health care to any American, no matter their age or level of sickness, if they enroll in the National Medical Research Program. How it would work is simple. A small microchip would be inserted into the patient's hand. This chip will be to monitor his or her health as a way of data tracking for researchers. Americans would agree to participate in studies necessary for the advancement of all forms of research. For this, these Americans would never have to pay for health care. Participation is 100% optional, and for those that do not participate, health care would still be affordable and accessible. As planned, Susan commented, it sounds unreasonable to expect Americans to give their bodies for medical research just to receive health care. Unreasonable to whom? Currently, we pay people to participate in medical research now for next to nothing. But with my program, we are offering them a lifetime of free health care for participating in one study. All we would require is that patients maintain the microchip to monitor levels so that healthcare providers can improve upon treatment options. Seems like a fair trade and many people would participate. George was watching the whole debate play out as planned. He was tired of the show. He watched the audience attentively listening to everything Jay said. There was a science to manipulating people's sensibilities and he was a master. Deep down, George wanted to blow up everything, but he couldn't. He truly wasn't brave enough to endure what would befall him. He interjected as planned. Forgive me, Mr. Denton, but it's rather easy for you to stand here telling Americans to participate in a program you would never participate in yourself. Mr. Duncan, forgive me, but I'm going to stop you right there. I'm already participating. Jay lifted his right hand and pointed to a small incision. I've been microchipped and I've been participating in medical research for close to a year. The audience was stunned. There was an audible gasp among the crowd. Jay got the reaction he wanted. Everything had gone exactly as planned. The next day, every newspaper and TV station talked about the moment Jay Denton talked the talk and walked the walk. He was scheduled for interview after interview to discuss the procedure and how simple it was. Meg was already working with a filmmaker to make a short film following Jay to doctor's visits so Americans could see how it would work. The media was already spinning it in the direction they wanted. Newspapers and blogs were all talking about how participating in research studies isn't taxing. It's the new way to give back. It only took a week for the polls to show that most Americans who once would never consider inserting a microchip for medical care or research would now strongly consider it. Most importantly, those who were on the fence were firmly sold on the idea. It wouldn't be long before others would come along too. Furthermore, when asked what they thought of Jay Denton, words like, inspirational, courageous, and change maker were among the top cited. So I just wanted to read that little snippet to you. So obviously no one's getting microchipped, <laughs> okay? That's not what's happening now. Um, the idea was that that part is fiction, but the idea was to share with you some of the public relations tactics 
that Jade was using to win the American people over and how that's happening right now with the vaccine. Um, so I just want your thoughts, you know, like, was this close to what's going on now? Was it not so much? Uh, and what did you think of the story, what Jade is doing, trying to get people interested in behind him? Also, make sure that you get the books. I read this chapter to you, and I didn't want to give too much away, but I really wanted to read that part. But there's still so much in these books that I discuss and I get into. I talk about um, artificial intelligence and inventing things and how scientists have a moral responsibility and duty. We talk about that in the first book. And in the second book, politics and religion and all of these things are discussed. So please check it out. Please support. This is the first book, Spiritual Warfare Rise to Spiritual Warfare. And then this is the second book, Spiritual Warfare Rise to Power. So please get the books and support. Um, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Make sure that you follow us on all forms of social media and just stay in tune with the community. And I would love to hear your thoughts and welcome. Thank you.